Most people think the most dangerous part of flying is turbulence. Most people are dead wrong, because turbulence has never ripped an engine off a Boeing before takeoff. But on November 6, 2025, something did. This is UPS Flight 2976, the free flight that went from routine departure to catastrophic fireball in under 30 seconds. A triple engine MD-11F powered by three GECF turbofans with nearly 62,000 pounds of thrust each failed before it ever even got airborne. And here's the terrifying part. It wasn't weather. It wasn't pilot error. And it wasn't even initially an engine failure. It was something far more alarming, something we've only seen once before in modern aviation on American Airlines Flight 191, the deadliest single aircraft disaster in US history. And today we are going to tear this apart piece by piece. The physics, the mechanics, the metallurgy, the sequence, the investigation, the evidence, and most importantly, what this means for aviation safety worldwide. Because this is not just an accident. This is a warning sign UPS 2976 was a scheduled cargo flight from Louisville Muhammad Ali International Airport to Honolulu. No passengers, just freight. Three experienced crew in the cockpit, a meticulously planned flight, 38,000 gallons of jet fuel loaded, and a 34-year-old MD, 11F that had been in active UPS service since 2006. Weather was perfect. Visibility clear, winds calm, no storms, no contamination on runway 17R, no external risk factors. Conditions were ideal. The checklist was signed, clearance was given, but what wasn't ideal, what wasn't clear and what no one saw coming was sitting inside the aircraft structure and I want you to lock this part in because it sets up everything. This aircraft had just completed six weeks of heavy maintenance at UPS's San Antonio facility from September 3rd to October 18th, 2025. It returned to service only 17 days before it crashed. Maintenance itself is not the enemy. Maintenance keeps airplanes safe but improper maintenance? That has downed giants before, so keep that in mind. Flight 2976 begins its takeoff roll. Three CF6 engines spool up normally. The MD-11F accelerates down 17R. V1 is nearing, rotation speed approaching. Everything appears nominal, but then contrast moment, something completely uncontained happens. Something violent, something asymmetric. The left engine, engine one, detaches from the wing. Not an engine failure, not a compressor stall, not a surge, a full separation of the engine and the pylon assembly itself. And that is not an engine problem. That is a structural problem. And as 6.5 tons of engine breaks away, the real disaster is only beginning. Let's pause the story for one second to appreciate the scale. The GE CF6-80 engine is 4.3 meters long, 2.7 meters in diameter, weighs more than 6,000 kilograms dry, spins at tens of thousands of RPM, and produces 61,960 pounds of thrust. It is not designed to fall off an airplane. And yet, on UPS 2976, it didn't just fall. It violently separated, ripping away its pylon, the structural spine connecting it to the wing, and instantly rupturing fuel lines in the process. Within milliseconds, a cascading failure begins. A catastrophic fire erupts along the left wing. And this is not a contained engine fire. This is raw, open fuel combustion, fed by fractured lines directly tied to 38,000 gallons of loaded jet, A1. Pilots don't even have time to declare a mayday. The aircraft is now asymmetrical, heavy, low, unbalanced, and on fire, but it gets worse. Debris and superheated gases from the left wing are now being ingested by the tail-mounted number two engine. Witnesses later report flames or abnormal exhaust plumes in the tail engine sector, a clue that secondary engine compromise was already underway if the tail engine lost thrust or suffered damage. The MD-11F is no longer a trijet. It is a one and a half engine aircraft at max takeoff weight at rotation speed at sea level density altitude and below 200 feet, there is no performance margin for recovery. And the data confirms it. The airplane reached only 175 feet of altitude, remained airborne for approximately 30 seconds. There was never a climb, only a brief lift, followed by an uncontrolled descent trajectory. And unlike accidents where pilots have minutes or even seconds to react, UPS 2976 had almost none. But here's the twist. The investigation is showing early signs that the initial failure point wasn't the engine itself. This is the key turning point in understanding this accident. 
It wasn't a mechanical disintegration of the turbofan cord. It may have been a structural failure of the pylon attachment system, the mounts, interfaces, the bolts, the support structure that physically holds the engine to the wing. And if that sounds familiar, it should, because that is the exact failure family that destroyed American Airlines 191 in 1979 back then. Improper maintenance procedures caused unseen structural damage during an engine change. The damage went unnoticed. The engine eventually separated. Hydraulics were destroyed. Control surfaces failed. The aircraft was uncontrollable. UPS 2976 is only the second time in modern history that an engine pylon separation has occurred during takeoff. This is not a statistical anomaly anymore. This is an investigative echo. The aircraft slams into an industrial zone just beyond the runway. Not residential, not urban a petroleum facility and recycling plant. And in this tragedy, that geography inadvertently prevented a mass casualty event. But it also created an inferno. The impact ruptures fuel tanks on the aircraft and ruptures storage tanks on the ground. This is not only 38,000 gallons of jet fuel burning, it is up to 300,000 gallons of combined flammable liquids igniting simultaneously. Multiple petroleum tanks fail, secondary explosions erupt. A fireball stretches across half a mile. Smoke columns are visible for miles and are detected on weather radar. The burn continues for hours. 13 lives are lost, three crew members, 10 individuals on the ground, including one child. Immediate environmental response is triggered. The EPA deploys hazardous mitigation teams. The FBI joins evidence coordination. Air quality and water contamination assessments begin for the Salt River and Ohio River tributaries. This is now not just an aviation disaster, but an environmental emergency and criminal forensic investigation scene. And through the chaos, something critically important happens fast. The black boxes are recovered intact. Both the cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder are extracted on November 5th, 2025. Despite heat exposure, they survive structurally. No data is lost. The CVR holds 63 hours of cockpit audio covering 24 previous flights, including the accident flight. The FDR contains 420 tracked parameters, engine telemetry, control surfaces, hydraulic pressures, temperatures, vibration signatures, fuel metrics, and structural loads. This means investigators will know the exact millisecond the engine departed, the stress loads on the pylon pre-separation, whether there were vibration anomalies or precursor oscillations. Engine core behavior. Before detachment, crew callouts and control inputs, whether secondary engines ingested debris, whether hydraulics failed, and when we aren't hypothesizing anymore. We are reverse engineering reality. On the runway, the evidence trail reads like a mechanical autopsy. Investigators recover the full left engine core, pylon attachment fragments and structural mounts, cowling sections, multiple fan blade segments, debris scatter consistent with high velocity separation, fire pattern analysis burns. Fuel spray residue mapped across the departure vector for an object debris teams walk 17R and 17L. Every fragment is geolocated, cataloged, photographed, and mapped to reconstruct momentum vectors and failure sequencing. At the same time, maintenance archives are subpoenaed and reviewed. And this is where the spotlight narrows 0.6 weeks of heavy maintenance at San Antonio. Engine-related work completed, mounts accessed, structural interfaces exposed, hardware installed, removed, or retorqued, inspection signed, paperwork completed. But paperwork is not proof of precision. Investigators are now examining three main failure paths, maintenance-induced structural damage, improper tooling, torque, alignment, or handling during engine or pylon servicing pre-existing fatigue, corrosion or cracking in the pylon structure undetected during inspection, uncontained engine failure that destroyed its own mounting system but early indicators, debris mapping, and failure signatures are leaning heavily toward option one or two, structural compromise, not engine engine core self-destruction. And here is the uncomfortable truth. Pylon failures do not happen spontaneously. They accumulate, they hide, they propagate invisibly in metal until the load exceeds the tolerance, which means the failure on November 6th may have been incubating for months, possibly years. Let's talk precedent because this context matters. American Airlines 191, 1979, DC-10, 
left engine plus pylon detachment, hydraulic severance, loss of control surfaces, catastrophic crash, 273 fatalities, the mechanical architecture between a DC-10 and an MD. 11F is not identical, but the lineage is close. The installation philosophy is shared. The load paths are similar. The failure mode rhyme is impossible to ignore. Now compare the two. Both events involve left side engine pylon separation during takeoff. Both involve aircraft near rotation speed. Both involve insufficient airframe control authority after separation. Both involve post-maintenance timelines prior to failure. What is different? UPS 2976 did not lose 273 lives because it did not reach altitude. It had no time to climb, stall, or roll inverted. It simply had no thrust left to fly. So what happens next? The preliminary report is expected within 30 days of the incident, around early December 2025. This will summarize known facts, but will not assign blame. The full NTSB final report, including probable cause, contributory factors, and safety recommendations is expected in 12 to 18 months between May and November 2026. The priorities now are metallurgical analysis of pylon fracture points, bolt torque, shear, and deformation profiles, microscopic cracking, corrosion propagation, and wave front patterns, engine vibration signatures prior to detachment, structural load path tolerances at V-speeds, maintenance procedural compliance review, human factors inside maintenance execution, Organizational safety culture analysis, because this is no longer a question of what happened, is a question of how it was allowed to happen to the lives lost on the ground, to the families, the responders, the investigators, the witnesses. This is not another aviation video. This is a moment in safety history, a moment written in steel, fire, fuel, and data the industry cannot afford to forget. If you value deep aviation analysis, system breakdowns, and engineering first investigations, hit subscribe because accidents like this are not anomalies. They are lessons written at the edge of physics. Stay sharp, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.